Hi, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about our little Tar River round balers to go on the three point of your little small compact and subcompact tractors. This baler was category one three point 540 PTO. This is going to fit on tractors as small as around 20 horsepower. You start getting over about that 40 horsepower and there's other options out there that might be more viable than this one. But this will fit on a small tractor that cannot run a regular square baler or a big round baler. So this is the twine that these little balers come with. It's more of a actual rope slash yarn than it is what you're truly used to seeing in an actual poly baling twine. This works great in the baler. I assume this would be some type of biodegradable type material. So the bales might not store as long with something like this on them. We did just run this little baler with a very common, very easy to buy. Uh, this is 9600 170 baling twine. This is an actual poly twine. That will come in two bundles. You buy 9,600 feet, and that's 170 pound knot strength twine. That we ran this twine through here, the baler picks it up great, goes right through the chamber, works fine. So there would be absolutely no problem if any of your local tractor dealerships or wherever you buy twine, if you could buy a 9600 170, or if you could get into, like I believe they even have one of them that's like a 9000 170, any of those bundles should fit right into the baler and you should be able to string that in and make bales with them. So I'm gonna show you right here on this little baler. This is a question that comes up all the time on this baler. I actually take a lot of phone calls about this as far as how does this system work? And I'm talking about the twine system, that wrap system. I've had quite a few customers that have had some issues trying to just get started. After they get started, the, the process works fine, but they're having some issues getting started on one, threading the twine through the baler, and then they're having a few issues of the first few bales they run trying to figure out what should be happening and how it should go. This is how, whenever you are done making a bale, this is where this tie arm should be sitting. It cuts the string off about that long, about a foot long, and just dangles it down here in this chamber. There's rollers down in there about a foot and that twine's just dangling above it. Whenever this deal trips, when it gets to the density it wants and the size of bale that it wants, it will trip and this arm is gonna drop down all the way to this other side and this string is gonna fall right in between two rollers. And when it falls in between those two rollers, the hay itself pushing the hay up against the roller is going to grab the string and then pull it around through the baler. The bigger the string is, the better it works. Right now, we tried a system. This is a 110 pound knot strength twine. We tried this. It doesn't work the greatest. With drier hay, it might not even work at all. With decent moisture hay, 12, 14%, I could get it to tie and it worked just fine. But um, if you got drier hay and um, extremely dry hay would be really bad, the hay itself, when that tail drops down in there, the hay won't grab it up against the roller. The bale just sits there and spins, but it won't grab the string and actually pull it around with the bale so that it ties everything up. So I'm gonna show you a couple different things. I'm gonna show you one, how to thread the string through the baler, get it on how it needs to go through here. And then two, I'm gonna show what needs to happen with this tie arm, especially if you um, stored it over the winter time and you came back and you didn't know where this arm was, how you get it there. First thing, well, I already got the string in here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what this tie arm will do and where it's supposed to be. If I come over here to this other side and just grab a hold of the string, this string is what actually powers this tie arm. So once the string goes into the chamber of the baler and the hay grabs it, when it starts pulling hay through, that's what actually moves this tie arm. So right now, this is going through its full stage of tying, and it will put on quite a bit of string. 
once this goes all the way back now, we're just gonna go all the way to the other side, go all the way completely across, and then now it's gonna start coming back. That was the end of its stroke. That is where that thing should be at when it gets done. And there's a little, there's a little knife in there. It, it's hard for you to see it, but this twine would actually be down in the baler. And when it comes back across there, it comes across this knife and that knife cuts it off. Once that cuts it off, it will leave us this tail again of this bar. So it is possible whenever you get your baler, you get it stuck on the return side instead of on the forward side. Right here, when you start pulling it, it should be heading towards the passenger side, not towards the driver's side, or else it's not gonna tie the bail right, it's not gonna engage right, the, the whole thing uh, won't do what it's supposed to do. But that's how you could tell if you didn't know, yes, you're gonna burn a few feet of twine, but you'll know exactly where it is, and then all you'd have to do then at that point, once you got it down there, just take that, cut it off. The other deal that we've had on there is I've had some guys that um, you let the hay get way, 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 way too dry. It's 10% moisture or less. You see the arm dropping down in there, but it just will not start pulling the twine out of it. From the tractor, most of the time, you can reach this from the seat of the tractor. One of the things that you can do, I've done it on there and it, it works great. It's kind of a, annoying, but it's something that you can do on there. All you gotta do is reach back behind the tractor and pull on this. Pull out six, seven, eight inches, a foot of string, and as soon as you just pull on that a little bit, the baler will grab it and suck it right in there and then away it goes. But it might drop that down and it just might not start pulling the string and that's all you'd have to do to do that. Now I was gonna show you, as far as restringing this, what you'd have to do, I'm gonna pull it completely out of there. So once it's completely out, you can kind of see exactly what needs to be done. This is just coming out of the chamber now. So we've got that roll of string in there right now. This is 110 pound non-straight twine. So there is a hole right here on the side of the chamber that your twine is gonna come through the box and come through. It comes through this little tensioner. This is just a little flat plate that you pull down and those springs hold it up against your string. Your string goes in between that and this little mount. Once it comes out there, it's gonna go over that little roller and then you get to choose what groove you wanna put this on. There's three grooves. The top groove is going to be for more string on the bale. If you put it on this bottom groove, less string on the bale. Um, I'm a fan of more string on the bales. Uh, they hold together better. Um, there, is some air, there is some reasons why you would want less on there, but for um, almost every customer out there, the more string you put on it, the better you're gonna be with it. Um, so you'd put that around there. Once that gets around there, there's a little spring on this other roller, just a little eyelet spring. Put it through there, pull it through, Then we're gonna just poke it through that roller on the back side of that, and now it's gonna go into the chamber. Um, you'll see, uh, if you're looking at it and you're doing it yourself, there's another pulley in there about three inches away, and you just pull it through, get it on that back side pulley, and we're gonna pull it right in there and on the other side of this little deal. Once that's in there like that, that is all on all of its pulleys the way it needs to go. It's gonna come up then on the actual tie arm itself, and it's gonna go over the top of this pulley and through this other tensioner. This is the same thing that we had down there on the other side, it's just a little spring-loaded tensioner. You just poke it through the middle of that and pull that through. And then that puts all the string where it's supposed to go on this particular unit. Um, and like I said, it ain't gonna matter if this tail is that long, because it's just gonna fall down in the chamber whenever you want it to anyway. Like I said, it's gonna ideally cut it off about a uh, foot, 14 inches. As long as it's like that, that's what you would do to run it. Once again, if you put it in this groove, it'd be more twine, kind of a mid-range and less twine. On this particular baler, we kind of showed it earlier, but this is that adjustment for the density of the bale. This little rod right here on the side, Right now, it is in its uh, heaviest bale form. Right now, it's densest form. If you would move that up to the top, it will make a less dense bale whenever you move it up. But that's kind of pretty much everything there is to kind of adjust or do on this side. So as you can see, this is a very viable option. If you already own a small horsepower tractor that is not able to run some of the other options that are out there, the little uh, square balers, round balers, and everything that you can actually run that's already on the market, this is a very viable option for the guy that's got uh, half an acre, two acres, five acres, 10 acres of grass, 
alfalfa, whatever they're wanting to do, but you'd like to put up your own hay and you'd like to store it so you can feed it to your own horses, cows, livestock, whatever you have at the time. This is something that will get that job done for you where you don't have to rely on somebody else to come out to your place on their timeline to do the job that you want. If you already own the tractor, this is something you could put in there and get the job done yourself. Thanks for watching. If you like videos like this, make sure to subscribe.